This is Michelle Tabor Kimbrough, and I'm here in, in Panama City at the Panama City Center for the Arts. I happen to have a solo exhibit called The Cujan Carnival at the Panama City Center for the Arts. Uh, the show will be up until the 25th of September, and then the show will actually move down to Port St. Joe to the Joe Center for the Arts for the month of October. So I'm here to talk about um, the Crucian Carnival series and all about uh, my creation of this artwork and to also encourage you all that if you happen to be uh, in the area to come visit Panama City Center for the Arts. Just to talk a little bit about Panama City Center for the Arts, um, our community was hit by Hurricane Michael back in October 2018 and we have experienced a a huge amount of damages and as many of you know we are still dealing with hurricane issues currently and um, so this center in just really recent months has managed to reopen and start having exhibits and I happen to be one of the artists um, that has a, an opportunity to be able to display so when we have artists exhibiting the artwork in um, the Center for the Arts, you know, buying artwork does two things. One, it gets to uh, fund me so that I can make a living. And the other part is it also provides funds for the Center for the Arts, and it, which enables them to be able to offer programming for all different ages. And they have a, a great set of programs um, for this community. So I highly recommend that you uh, check it out. So anyways, uh, the Crucian Carnival series is a, set, is a series of artwork that I had started back in 2017. My husband and I had gone to St. Croix to visit some friends and it happens to be, uh, uh, was during the annual Christmas parade and of course, you know, I carry my camera all over the place and I take a lot of pictures. And the imagery is from those parades, the Crucian Carnival series. Um, reflects the community of St. Croix. So the painting that I have here um, is uh, True Postess Callie, and she's uh, one of the earlier pieces that I created. And um, she was created with using the method of paint pouring. So I, all of the artworks that is in this exhibit are made of watercolor. And that's what I primarily paint with, though I also paint with acrylics and oils. But, uh, so I use paint pouring in, with this method. And basically how that works is, um, after I sketch out the artwork, I also um, mask the widest or lightest areas of, of what I want to keep white or light in the artwork. And then once I do that, it dries. I then wait the entire paper and then I pour three primary colors, a red, yellow, and a blue. And then once it, and as it pours down through here, those colors tend to mix and so you end up with other color colors like green and purple and orange. And so, and what that does is it forces me to use those colors to create that image and then once I let that, all of that dry, then I start painting into this uh, image. Now, I not only used watercolors, I also used some acrylics in this painting because I also like using the iridescent paints. And so there's some sparkly stuff in there because a lot of their, you know, a lot of their uh, um, costumes had, you know, all sorts of sparkly stuff. They had, they had, um, Oh yeah, I'm having a senior moment. That sparkly stuff all over their skin and, and, and everything else. So I, I wanted to have that all in there. So this is one of my favorite paintings. So I'm gonna move over around and uh, show some of the other images. This one's She Mama Guy. And again, you know, she was one of the few uh, uh, Parades, attendees that it was all dressed up and her all her face was painted even her sunglasses were painted 
you know, and uh, she was one of the few people that had such a drastic um, design on her face, so, you know, I just had to paint her. And I used the same method, I used the paint pouring method, because she's also one of the earlier pieces that I created, and uh, I like her too. And she, Mama Guy, is sort of a meaning of, um, you know, crazy talk, you know, and so she's all dressed up looking crazy. I figured, you know, that was a uh, fitting name. Um, I'm going to step back. Let's see if I can get both these paintings in here. Aha. So, this, this painting here is called Life's a Carnival. Um, she, too, is also one of the earlier pieces, and she, um, it, but I also used uh, paint pouring and iridescent colors. So when you look at this piece at different angles, it, it shimmers a little bit, and, uh, and to me, this emulates the, the whole carnival feel of that. In fact, I have her on my t-shirt, and uh, one of the thing, cool things about my website, which you can go to, to my bio and it'll take you right to my website, you can get this image either as a print, you know, whether it's on uh, acrylic or metal or, or canvas, or you can even get it on a t-shirt or a mug or, you know, or even a coaster. So um, I have a lot of other abilities. But this is also available. The original is available. And by the way, um, this is a half, what I call a half sheet watercolor. And fully framed, it's $1,200 for that piece. These other two pieces, and I'll just have to move this so you'd be able to see them. These are actually very new. Um, they were created just, um, just this, this year. And they are watercolor. Well, this one's watercolor on canvas board. And this one I actually used fluid acrylics on canvas board. Um, and truthfully, you, you really can't tell the difference because, you know, of, of how I use the mediums. But I painted these more in the traditional style of, of watercolor painting. And it's simply framed, and this is, these are 11 by 14s, and they're available for $600. I'm going to move around, and so this one here is the Crucian Carnival number 25, 6, 7, 8, number 28. <laughs> yeah, um, it got to a point where I just couldn't come up with names for these pieces because, you know, I ended up almost creating 50 pieces. Now, there's only 23 pieces in this show, but I, I was busy painting away, trying to create a, a large number, a body of work. This is a full sheet watercolor, and, you know, the central focus is this woman here, and, you know, um, I just really liked her face and her expression, and you notice how her lips are together. Everybody in the show had their lips pursed in some, you know, goofy way, and, and you know, when Pete, the young girls are doing their little selfies, they're doing that little lip thing. Well, they they were doing all that little lip thing you know, throughout the parade, and, and the only thing I can understand from it is sort of giving it, giving them a sassy look. So what I like about this piece is the fact that you know I've got the uh, parade uh, people. There was even someone here that had you know some headgear, crazy headgear on. But uh, I wanted the, the uh, uh, crowd shown in there as well, but you really can just see, you know, the essence of them in that one. All right, so I'm gonna move around the room, and I'm gonna go across the way here. So, these two pieces, um, are watercolors on watercolor paper and um, this one's Susanna and this is Bird Queen's Guardian 2 and that's because I have another one um, that I had to paint because I, 
I really loved painting her. I just loved, you know, that expression that she was creating with her lips all, you know, poked out, and then just the, the blue mermaid style co costume. So, you know, all these names that I came up with are just sort of creative names, you know, um, to give an idea. And what I like about this one is, you know, you've got the uh, the crowd in the background, you know, all in that, all in the uh, monochromatic orange. Susanna here is just a, a picture of her face. Um, it's just a, you know, I did a lot of close-ups of, of their faces and uh, just trying to capture a moment. And I love all the, the feathers and then even the background here where, where you know, it's, there's all sorts of other activity going on in the back, but you can't really tell. And these are $700. So I'm going to just scan this entire wall here. And this, in, this wall has um, large paintings. These are full sheet watercolor. In fact, and my full sheet watercolors are $2,100. And so, like I said, Panama City Center for the Arts, um, you know, if you purchase one of my paintings, not only do you help, uh, help me make a living, but you also help, uh, you know, uh, Panama City Center for the Arts be able to offer additional programs, you know, because they get a percentage of it. This painting here, you know, is a, is a troop of women, and all of these women were heavy set. They, they were all buxom ladies. And so they had all their the beautiful green going on, and I just had fun, you know, with, with the watercolor. Because the nice thing about watercolor is you could just let it go and, and throw in different colors, and, and it creates all this fun, crazy stuff. Um, I happen to have, you can go to my, my Instagram site or even my website and, and click on this image, and you can see the painting process of this painting. The next one also, I have this one also videoed of the painting process. And I, and I painted these, both of those images in two different ways. Um, this painting I painted more in the traditional way where I worked on an area and moved my way throughout the painting. Whereas this painting, I, I painted this really fast, uh, very loose, very direct. And I basically started with um, all of the background first, and I literally painted it. And you can watch that on the video and actually see how I painted that process. And once I did the whole background, then I worked on the uh, characters. Um, this guy here is called a Moku Jambi. Um, basically like a, a spirit kind of person and then of course you got the Paradis and this is an image that, that actually I sort of melded at multi, you know different pictures to be able to come up with this scene and, and I had a lot of fun painting it and it too is $2,100 um, this one's Princess Tanisha and, and, and all of these paintings are brand new, you know. Um, she was 2020, the latter part of 2020. And I like Princess Tanisha. I love the feathers. I love the, this, this part of it, you know. And then just her, her face and all the decoration um, of, her, of her design. Um, This one here is also painted in the traditional way of watercolors. Um, it happens to be Crucian Carnival um, 23. And again, I didn't have a, a name, but you can, you, know, you can see that I went with all the blues, and then here in the center, I went with black and white. You know, every time that I pulled out an image that I wanted to work on, I, I went by what that image told me to do. I mean, that feeling that I got, you know, how I wanted to express um, that image. And this one I had fun with just playing with all the blues and then just, 
you know, have, creating that black and white in, in that image. Um, this one's print, uh, Jasmine. And uh, Jasmine, um, I, I love just this whole part of her, you know, and the fact that her feathers go all the way up in there. And you got some of, you got some of the parade attendees that are in there. Um, in in the, just how that light just hits her face and you can just see, and she has her lips all pursed as well. It's so, it's, it's pretty cool. So all of the, those that we've, I've just shown you are full sheet watercolors and, and all of them were trained painted more in that traditional way of painting with watercolors. Um, these are watercolors with watercolor paper. Now let me set this down here and see if I can see it all. It's actually watercolor paper that is adhered to aluminum. It's, it's a Fabriano watercolor paper on aluminum. It's by a company called Raymar that creates um, those. So it's already ready made. And what's nice about it is, is, you know, to be able to have a watercolor without any glass or acrylic on top of it. And by the way, all of my paintings that must require um, glazing, in other words, glass, I only use acrylic. And that's because I enter into a lot of competitions and in their rules, they only require acrylic. Well, the nice thing about acrylics is it's, it's very light. It, it makes it real easy for carrying on, on framing. Well, this method, I don't have to put any acrylic because for me to fix the watercolor, what I did was I used an acrylic spray. And so the, the face of this, you know, I don't have to worry that about water hitting it and, it and, you know, the paint starts coming off because the acrylic has fixed it. And so it's just framed real simple. These are all 8 by 10s and all of them, I use that paint pouring method where I used uh, three primary colors and I let those colors dictate how I created the image. And, and these 8 by 10s are $300. So these two paintings are 12 by 12 uh, watercolor on canvas. So now painting on canvas, canvas board, um, clay board is very different from painting on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper accepts the paint and, it, and, and will absorb those colors and it will fix on there. But watercolor on acrylic in canvas or uh, on uh, canvas or canvas board or clay board it the paint doesn't absorb into it it sits on top of it so now you have to paint in a different way and basically the way i paint on it is very direct i literally lay in all those colors and i have to get my values right then and there if I go back into it, I have to be very caref careful because I can literally lift all that color off and you'll see the white of the canvas again. So in order for it to be framed without any glazing, um, again, I fix it with an acrylic. So it's varnished and it's framed in a 12 by 12 frame. Um, actually, it's a deep frame. So this is, this is a little deeper than all the other frames that I've been using. So this one's called Ember, and this one is called Dinah. And I really like Dinah because of, because of all, you can see the parade of people inside. I just like the coloring and everything. And, and these are $600. This painting here is a full sheet watercolor. Um, it is number 24. And again, all of these are brand new paintings, you know, within, within um, this, this year or 2020. And um, 
Here she is facing the crowd, but if you look at the crowd, they're really not paying attention to her. Now keep in mind, you have all sorts of other attendees that are, that are there. Um, you know, you got prayed people uh, behind her, you got prayed people all to this side, so they're all looking in different directions. And, and the fun thing about painting their faces, especially this little girl, you know, she, she looks like she's a little mad or whatever, I don't know, who knows, her brother might have said something. But uh, it's fun to capture them. And, and everybody's got their little cell phones out, you know, they're all carrying on the conversation. And, you know, you can make up a story from that. These are also 11 by 14 uh, watercolor on a canvas board. And again, you know, I was able to varnish it so that it doesn't have to have glazing. Um, again, you know, this is a couple. This is number 26, and this is number 22 um, in the series. And the last two that I have in the show see if I can get this in here. This one is Zariah. Now Zariah is an 8 by 10 and she is on watercolor paper. She's on that Raymar um, uh, board where it's watercolor paper with uh, that's on aluminum. So I framed it with a matting with the tr traditional framing and the reason why I did that is because like I said, I enter into a lot of competitions and they require, you know, certain kind of framing and, you know, off, you know, white or off white mat, simple framing. And in this case, uh, I used a five inch mat. And the cool thing about using a really wide mat is it makes a little painting look big. And she's, she's for uh, $400. And then here is the last one in the show. And this is Merc Queen's Guardian. So you just saw the other one, the Merc Queen's Guardian 2 with the orange background. And um, this one is the first one I did and I used a yellow background, which makes her pop a little more. Um, and, and again, I just loved the character. I just had to paint her again. That's the reason why there's two paintings. Now she too is an eight by 10 with a five inch white mat and simple framing, you know, for $400. So anyways, um, the show goes until uh, the 25th of September, and then it gets to travel down to Port St. Joe, Florida, uh, uh, to the Joe Center for the Arts. And at that show, not only will I be showcasing my Crucian Carnival series, I will be also showcasing casing, um, a, a huge variety of my other artwork that I do as well, because I'm a pretty eclectic artist and I create, I like to paint all sorts of subjects. So stop by to the Panama City Center for the Arts and check it out. And if you're not able to, you can visit my website and uh, you can do that by visiting my bio page on Instagram. You can also visit my Facebook page, which is the Art Factory Gallery, or even my personal page, Michelle Tabor Kimbrough. And I greatly appreciate you watching. Thank you.